you would not believe the amount of money that is made selling hearing aids. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 175, and today I'm going to be talking about how much hearing aid clinics make every single year. That's right, I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of behind the scenes about how profitable selling hearing aids can actually be. But before I get into it, give me a thumbs up if you like the mood lighting that I have in here. I put a little bit of extra time into uh, setting up the lighting to give more of a dramatic feel. Uh, if you don't like it, make sure that you give this video a thumbs down. I can see how many thumbs down every video gets. Don't worry, um, I have a thick skin, it won't bother me, but at least it'll let me know if you like or don't like the lighting. With that out of the way, I greatly appreciate it. Now, here's the thing, this last week, I had a patient, an existing patient, reach out to me and was inquiring about procuring another set of devices on eBay and then bringing those devices into the clinic for us to do programming of those devices. And so we've had this happen more and more over the course of the past year or two. And so what we actually instituted inside of our clinic was an adoption fee. And what I mean by adoption fee is that if you go and you purchase your devices elsewhere and you bring them to us, now I'm not talking about you went to an audiology clinic, you purchase your devices, they fit and program those devices for you and then you needed to move to a different state of Arizona, come into our clinic and have us work with you with those devices. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you're my patient, uh, you're coming in for a consultation, we tell you exactly what devices you need, um, uh, we've treated you already with devices and then you decide you want to go and buy devices elsewhere, come to our clinic and then get the exceptional care that we provide to our patients. What, so that's what I'm talking about. Um, so what we do is we, we apply this adoption fee for any one of those individuals that has been to us and they go get the devices and want to bring them back. And the reason that we did this adoption fee is because we identified that if every single patient were to go and take our recommendation, go and get devices for cheaply or used or whatever the case may be online or through a discount program or through a big box store and then bring them to us, we would ultimately go out of business. There would be no more high quality care coming out of Applied Hearing Solutions ever again for anybody. So we decided we're gonna implement this adoption fee. And so I, I basically told this patient, like you can absolutely go and buy those devices online just to let you know, here's our adoption fee. This is what you will pay before we even do any programming or anything like that with those hearing aids. Uh, and the response was, well, that's absolutely outrageous. And I'm like, well, okay. So like, you know, it, it is what it is. Like if, if you wanna receive this high quality care, you ultimately have to pay for it. I kind of think of it like this. If you like the restaurant in your local community and you're like, you know what? The prices are a little high. Why don't I go to the store and buy the food or buy the, like, the food items, bring them to you and have you cook them for me that way I only spend a few dollars on you doing the cooking, right? Does that sound good? Well, if you did that at a restaurant, what do you think would happen to that restaurant? the restaurant would go out of business. Like, like, businesses exist to make money by providing a valuable service for their community. And while we're on the topic of providing a service for the community, we are a small business. Uh, we serve our local community. We are family owned. Like me and Ashley, our entire livelihood is inside of this particular clinic, Applied Hearing Solutions here in Phoenix, Arizona. And I know that like the big city of Phoenix, it doesn't seem like, like local community, but me and Ashley, we're both from really small towns. And, and being a family owned business actually means something to us. And being a small business, we are exceptionally proud of that. We provide jobs for our local, uh, for individuals in our local community. We hire, our, sorry, we employ three audiologists, we have an audiology assistant, we have multiple front office staff. If, if we want to continue to function the way that we function, we have to charge what we need to charge in order to maintain that level of profitability inside of the clinic. Now you're probably wondering like, well, how much do hearing aid clinics make? How much do audiology clinics make? Well, if you look at some of the data that's public data online, you can go out and search this. The average clinic will generate around $350,000 to $400,000 of revenue in a given year. Now, when you think of it as revenue, you're probably like, oh my gosh, that's a ton of money. Like hearing aids cost, you know, four to $7,000 for a pair. You guys are making bank. And I'm just like, well, yeah, that sounds like a great number up to $400,000. But you have to consider that that's before expenses. 
Like that's before cost of goods, that's before paying the rent, that's before paying employees, that's before paying you know, heating and electric and, and uh, air conditioning and, and all the supplies that go into providing you know, uh, repair services and all of that stuff. Like that's before any expense. And so most people are shocked to find out that the average clinic will actually only profit 12% of what they bring in. And so when you start looking at numbers like $350,000 of revenue that a clinic brings in, that's only about $42,000 of profit at the end of the year. Now, I don't know about you, but um, if you have a doctorate that you spent eight years going to school for and you only made $42,000 of profit in your clinic at the end of the year, you'd probably be like, hmm, not really sure that's worth going to school for eight years for, right? Um, and getting an actual doctorate. And, and so, so I get that. Like, I, uh, I mean, it, it just seems ridiculous. But at the same time, hearing aids, you know, to a lot of people still are unaffordable. And so that we're, we're kind of in this position of where, like, like how, do we, how do we continue to provide a high quality of care and, and do it at a lower price. And, and honestly, it's, it's not easy. And in fact, you could argue that it's impossible to do. So a lot, of the, uh, a lot of individuals here lately have been going online. They're trying to purchase devices online and going to an audiology clinic and have that audiology clinic service those devices and program those devices and all that. Or they're trying to do it on their own. There's also this rise of private third parties, which are you go online, you do a search for discount hearing aids, and they send you to a clinic that's willing to sell you devices for a discounted rate. That company who set it up, they get a chunk of money, and then they pay a fitting fee to the actual clinic who fit you with those devices. And the thing is, is that more and more audiology clinics are agreeing to do these things because they figure, well, if I don't do them, I'm just going to go out of business. Like, like I'd rather have some business than no business. And on top of that, you have all these inflationary costs that are starting to happen. So the cost of goods for hearing aids, for us to even get hearing aids in the clinic, has gone up substantially in the past year, uh, past year and a half. Same thing with supplies, same thing with everything. Like everything is more expensive inside of an audiology clinic. And so when you start looking at, you know, your, your annual expenses are getting up to five to 10% higher than what they were the year before, and you're running a 12% profit margin, um, that's rough, you know? And, and I think of inside of our clinic, you know, I don't want to give specific numbers away because Ashley would probably kill me, um, but we spend well into the six figures in expenses every single month. And you're probably thinking like, Cliff, what the heck are you spending all that money on? Well, we spend an, ex an insane amount of time with our patients. We have a really nice facility that patients come to. Um, we have a lot of the nicest equipment inside of the clinic that money can buy. Um, we uh, have a number of employees that we employ and we want to pay a, a good living wage to. And, you know, it, it, it costs money to be able to provide exceptionally high quality care. And, you know, back when I, uh, when I first started the clinic, it was just me inside the clinic. And I could, uh, you know, sell uh, basically one set of hearing aids a month and at least meet my expenses because I wasn't paying myself anything. Uh, I had only one small room. Rent was really low. I had my equipment that I bought mainly used. Um, uh, was it the treatment experience that you get when you come into my clinic now? Not even close. I mean, it's... it's, it's like any time that you call the clinic now during the week and you have a problem, like you almost get on the phone immediately with someone or someone's calling you back in very short period of time to help you troubleshoot. If you walk in, even if an audiologist schedule is completely, like my schedule is completely booked throughout the day, there's someone who's there that can help you when you come into the clinic. But that is not always the case with a lot of audiology clinics that are operating on razor thin margins. And, and here's the thing, when, when you try to get treatment for the lowest cost possible. You can probably get it for the lowest cost possible. There's going to be someone out there who's willing to service you and make very, very little money or potentially even lose money in that transaction because they think that it'll come back around and benefit them at some point down the road inside the clinic. But what that's going to do is it's going to erode the quality of care inside of the hearing aid industry. And when I say hearing aid industry, I'm talking about audiology clinics and dispensing clinics, uh, the, anyone that dispenses hearing aids. And so it, you have to ask yourself, like, 
to save some money, which you would, you would save potentially a thousand, two thousand bucks, you know, twenty five hundred bucks by going online and purchasing hearing aids and then taking them into a clinic. But if everyone were to do that, just keep in mind that there there would be no such thing as high quality care a anymore. Like it would turn everything would turn into the way it is turning in the the medical world, where if you want to get high quality, like a, a, a doctor, get a doctor or a physician to spend a lot of time with you, you have to go concierge, where you're spending you know, hundreds to thousands of dollars a month, um, whether you need your doctor or not. So then anytime you have a problem, you can go in and they're going to spend time with you because insurance has virtually ruined healthcare inside the United States. No doctor can spend more than a few minutes with you at any given moment. At the end of the day, we've made a decision inside of our clinic that we care about one thing and that's providing extremely high quality care and it cost us a certain amount of money to do it we've run the numbers we know how much we have to charge our patients to be able to stay in business and to turn a profit at the end of the year and to justify the risk of us being self-employed small business owners the family-owned business where we don't have another income inside of our family right and um and if that theory like so here's the thing if people are not willing to pay it, then, then that's fine. The, there's, there's plenty of patients that we've identified and there's a lot of people who fly to Arizona to get treatment in our clinic who are willing to pay what our normal and customary fee is, which it, the crazy thing is, is it's not like it's exorbitantly higher than most clinics out there. It's, it's pretty much the industry average is what we charge, but we just choose to spend substantially more time with our patients. And, um, and if we can't do that, if we can't continue to do that, then we're, we're just gonna close the doors. Like I, I'm not willing to cheapen the quality of care inside of our clinic. And there's plenty of places that are out there that can service you if you want cheaper. And, and the thing is, is that the, the majority of our industry is gonna continue to consolidate. The small practices are gonna be purchased up by big you know, private equity companies, uh, by manufacturers, and then quality is gonna drop. And it's just the way that it works. Um, so you have to ask yourself, like, do you want to save a couple thousand bucks on treatment uh, right now? And then in five to 10 years, when you really need high level expertise to treat your hearing loss, it might not be there anymore because you chose to save money rather than paying a clinic what they're worth to give you high level of care. Now, that doesn't mean that you just spend a lot of money with a clinic who's not providing you high level of care. You have to also make sure that that clinic is following best practices. They have a high amount of support or a lot of support staff to support you anytime that something goes wrong. They're spending a really good amount of time with you. That's what I'm talking about, like high quality. If you want high quality, you just have to pay for high quality. It's no different than anything else in the world. Again, it comes across as me being complaining and whining. It's totally not. Our clinic is doing really good. Um, we, even though we have high expenses, we also make a good amount of revenue each month to where we know that we can at least meet our expenses if we continue to operate the way that we are now. And we make a decent profit to where, you know, we can live comfortably and not have to stress every day about um, it, how we're going to pay our bills, both in the clinic and at home. And um, so I just want to say that, you know, if, if, if you're our patient inside of our clinic, like you're going to get top notch care, but you're also going to have to pay for it. You know, um, if it upsets you that we charge an adoption fee for devices that you've purchased online, I'm, I'm sorry for that, but it, it is what it is. Uh, there's plenty of clinics out there who would most likely happily do it, uh, run their own clinic into the ground to help uh, you get a discount on your next set of hearing aids. But I, I should really probably stop talking about it at this point. I think you guys get the understanding here. Just keep that in mind the next time that you're thinking about trying to get them to give you discounted pricing on the devices and the services that they provide you. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you go ahead and give it that thumbs up button. I apologize it wasn't more in like a clear, concise manner, but I just kind of had to get that off of my chest. And uh, as always, I'll see you next week.